welcome to God's Word for us that come Ghana's online Christian station. Be blessed as you listen to messages on the site. close your eyes for a moment. The topic we are dealing with is a very very, very serious one. I'm speaking on Jesus, the Son of God. Lift up your hands. Lift up your hand and worship God for him. Yahweh can we have it again? Let the doors be open in the spirit. Can we sing a song unto the Lord? Oh, we bow down. We bow down. We worship. Jesus, the Son of God. And I want you to write down some notes. Um, there are topics you cannot simply preach right from the onset. By the nature of it, uh, you find out that uh, for many of you, for, for, it doesn't matter how many years you've been in the Lord, this may well be the first time you are sitting down to hear back to back subject like Jesus, the Son of God. You've taken offerings in His name. You've done many things in His name, but you've not had a profound encounter with a subject distinctly on His name. And so that means I want you to make room and hear the word of God on Jesus, the Son of God. I'm going to read a couple of scriptures. Let's go to Romans chapter 9, verse 5. In Bible study, Bible study, 
uh, we may call this this kind of topic is what you call a topic on apologetics. We are raising a defense of the subject. Who is Jesus, the Son of God? Because there are several opinions on the subject. Let's go to Romans chapter 9, verse 5. Romans chapter 9, verse 5. Good. Romans 9, 5. Of whom are the fathers, and from whom, according to the flesh, Christ came, who is over all, the eternally blessed God. Underline that. The eternally blessed God. Colossians chapter 2 verse 9 says, In Him dwells the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Hallelujah. Let's go to Acts chapter 9. I'm reading three scriptures up front. Acts chapter 9 verse 20. It says Acts chapter 9. Acts chapter 9, verse 20. Can I hear amen? Immediately he preached, this is Paul after his conversion. Immediately he preached the Christ in the synagogues that he is the Son of God. Paul preached immediately after his conversion. He preached that Christ is the Son of God. One more scripture. We go to Luke chapter 22, verse 17. Luke 22, verse 17. This is what it says. Then they said, okay, verse 69 says, Hereafter the Son of Man will sit on the right hand of the power of God. Then they said, then they all said, Are you then the Son of God? So he said to them, you rightly say that I am. Say with me, you rightly say that I am. One more time. Now in recent years, I want to give you a backdrop to the teaching. This is a very, listen, everything about Christianity hangs on what I'm dealing with. You miss this. You will not understand anything about church and Christ. The subject we are dealing with is a life and death issue. It is the pivot around which everything revolves, whether you know it or not. And I'm going to share with you a lot of deep things that may save your life and give you solid understanding of the purposes of God for the church. Can you say amen? In recent years, a book has been written, The Da Vinci Code. The Da Vinci Code gives all kinds of understanding and assumptions about Christ and has made matters worse for the church. Now, there's a great Bible scholar called George McDowell. George McDowell is a Christian apologist. A Christian apologist is one who defends, he's not a preacher, he doesn't have to be. But he studied academically as a child of God how to defend the word of God. So, he's a Christian apologist. He's on the top flight of them all. He's called George McDowell, a popular Christian apologist. And he's written a book called The Evidence That Demands a Verdict. It's a book you should read. And he argues that it is said, he argues that Jesus is either a liar, a lunatic, or Lord. The Evidence That Demands a Verdict. That popular apologist says, Jesus is either a liar, a lunatic or Lord. And then he builds a theory that says, if Jesus is called the trilemma, is from the word dilemma. Dilemma is confusion about two things. But now it's confusion about three things. So in Christian apologia, it's called the trilemma. And he says, if Jesus is not a liar, then he must be a lunatic. He said, a liar couldn't have said the things Jesus said. Because what he said has come to pass. So he cannot be a liar. He said, oh yeah, go ahead and give the Lord a hand. We are building our case. And he said, Jesus is not a lunatic. Because he has not known a lunatic who behaved like Christ. Who saved people and went to heaven. Because the lunatics are still here. So if Jesus is not a liar, 
he's not a lunatic, then he must be Lord. And it's a position that has been accepted, and he accuses it against Muslims, against agnostics, and he has won his case on every ground. Now, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, that we are dealing with today, there are some who said he never existed. Mind you. Others said Jesus is fiction. Some say he was not born of a virgin. Let's build this case well. Some said he never existed. Some said it's a fiction. Some said he was not born of a virgin. The others say, oh, he was a good moral teacher. Others say Jesus did not die on the cross. Well, another school of thought says his disciples stole his body. Out of which we have the swoon theory. The swoon theory says he slept. And when he woke up, they took him away and massaged him back to life. It's called the swoon theory. And so, they said his disciples stole his body. Others say he did not resurrect. So, when you mention Jesus, the son of God, it is a case of controversy and trouble. Atheists. Muslims, agnostics, Eastern religion, all of them fight the fact that Jesus is the Son of God. How do we prove it? Give God a hand this morning. Alright, look at me. Muslims accept. We are dealing with a very delicate subject. Give me a wave. Good. Muslims accept that Jesus Christ is a prophet, a great messenger, born of a virgin. But Muslims don't accept that Jesus died on the cross. They don't accept that he resurrected. They don't accept that he ascended into heaven. And worst of all, they don't accept the divinity of Christ. That Jesus is not God. How do we prove it? They deny the divinity of Christ. Now let me kick off with this. Time magazine, a non-Christian prestigious news organ, on December 6, 1999, listed people who had acquired power over 2,000 years. Times magazine, the most popular secular magazine in the world. They listed the names of People who have received a lot of power, worked up economic, political power for 2,000 years. And they mentioned Indira Gandhi, they mentioned Stalin, Roosevelt, Chairman Mao, Hitler, the Catherine the Great, Karl Marx, and Mohammed. But the Time magazine article of 6 December 1999 stated emphatically the single most powerful figure. Not merely in the secular, but in the spiritual. For 2,000 years, in all human history, is Jesus Christ the Son of God. Oh, can you stand up? Can you st- no, no, no. This is not a church. This is unbelievers. Put your hands together for the Lord. Today we will rubbish their stuff. Put your hands together for the Lord. You may be seated. So Times Magazine, 6 December 1999, unbelievers compared Jesus to all the political figures in 2,000 years. And without any pressure, they concluded, he's the most powerful human figure in all human history, Jesus of Nazareth. Now, let, let's, let's, let's go back a little and look at a brief secular history of Jesus before the Bible. We are building it on three fronts. Let's take it into their domain. A brief history from the secular history before we get into the world. What do they say in the world? Because they are challenging. He didn't die on the cross, was not born of a virgin, they challenge his divinity. So let's take it them on. There are three sources. 
for the search. We have the Bible, then we have extra biblical writings, and then sub apostolic fathers. Sub apostolic fathers were those who came after the apostles. Well, the apostles walked with Christ, but were others who followed. Someone shout Amen. Would you say Amen? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And so we are going to look at non biblical testimony. We'll be preaching and looking at the word. But it's not a topic you can just begin to quote scriptures. You've got to build your case well. Roman historian. There was a Roman historian called Tacitus. And he wrote, when people said Jesus didn't exist, he wrote that Emperor Nero blamed the Christians for the fire that destroyed Rome in AD 64. And he wrote that there were people following a certain man called Christus. And he wrote in history. This is not a Christian. Now, that's one part of the case. Another important evidence about Jesus Christ is from the letters of a man called Pliny the Younger. He was a Roman governor of Bithynia in Asia Minor. And he's dated A.D. 112. Listen to this. He says, he sent a letter to Emperor Trojan and he wanted to find out how to legally deal with the people who worship a certain Christ as God. There's a proof, historically, of this guy who wrote a letter to the man to find out from Emperor from Emperor Trojan how to deal with this sect that was worshipping a certain man they said rose from the dead. This is a secular record. Finally, the first century Jewish historian, Josephus, mentions Jesus severally in his writings. And this was a man who lived about the time of Jesus. Let's put our hands together for the Lord. Now, I'm changing direction. Now that we've seen extra-biblical history, let's get into the world. Bible history and Jesus, the Son of God. Lift your hand and say, Jesus, the Son of God. For the last time, you see, the Bible is the word of God containing prophecies. And this is a very narrow road to take. Jesus, the Bible tells us, it contains prophecies that one day, a certain Messiah and Savior will come. Many of the prophecies written in the Bible were hundreds of years before the time of Jesus. Now, Bible scholars have discovered that there are 332 distinct predictions of prophecies concerning the coming Messiah in the Old Testament. Let's turn and say 332. One more time. Say concerning the Messiah in the Old Testament. Now, the Old Testament was completed in 450 BC. That's 450 years before Jesus was born. There are 61 major prophecies concerning the Messiah from prophets and holy men over 2,000 years. Guess what? All the 332 predictions, including the 61 major predictions, are all fulfilled in Jesus Christ. You are not proud of that. You are not proud of it. I am building my case. We've seen extra biblical history. Now we come to biblical history. We'll be preaching. But I'm giving you proof beyond any shadow of doubt that of the 332 predictions and prophecies where Jesus was born was told within the 2,000 years. When he will be born was told within the 2,000 years. How he will be born. Even who he will die with on the cross was predicted. So now, the question is, how did Jesus come to fulfill 332 prophecies? 
Some say it's accident. Some say it's on purpose. And they say, tell school that say it's divine appointment. No, I don't know which side of the bed you are on. I say, some say it's accident. Maybe that's where you are. Others say it's on purpose. Others say it's coincidence. But there are those who say it's divine appointment. Give the Lord a hand if you believe it's divine appointment. Hallelujah. Amen. And so we find from God's word, as we get into God's word, that Jesus is not God's son. In the sense of a human father and son. Because God did not marry and have a son. Jesus is God's son in the sense that he is God made manifest in human flesh. Give the Lord a hand. You see, in building our case, I want you to understand that there are what we call tenets of faith, pillars of faith like the pillars of Islam. There are things that you must be willing to lay down your life for. If you believe in Christ. And Jesus being the Son of God is one of them. You see, Christianity is not an institution. Christianity is the only religion built on a man. If you take Jesus out of the equation, there's no Christianity. Give the Lord a hand. Clap well, clap well, clap well. And so when we talk, as we begin to build a platform, when we talk about Jesus Christ, the Son of God, we are looking at the eternal Jesus and the human Jesus. You see, it's a staggering confrontation for people who don't believe in the Word. That the Bible says the eternal Jesus, John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning was the Word. And the Word became flesh and dwelt amongst us. And yet, Jesus took on the form of a man and dwelt amongst us and took away our sins. And the Muslims say it's not possible. How can a God become a human being? When you talk about the eternal Jesus, you are speaking about Philippians chapter 2 verse 6. I'll be able to read all the scriptures. But when you talk about the human component, how he assumed the nature of a man, you see that in Philippians chapter 2, 6 and 7. So, the eternal Son of God took human form and dwelt amongst us. Let's give glory to His name. Oh, do it well. Now, before I get into the word, let me read you some very important information. Christianity for the last 2,000 years, in different cultures, has had a certain focus. That would always be the same. Christianity, unlike other religions, is about Jesus. If it could be proven that Jesus never existed, Christianity will collapse. You are dealing with Jesus, the Son of God. Some of you have been born again many years, but you are confronting something unusual. Because this is a very delicate subject. And it's the foundation for your experience and belief. To defend what you believe, you've got to understand what I have believed. You can't defend something you don't understand. And that's the problem of the modern church. We can speak in tongues and not know the Christ of tongues. Oh, give God a hand. And, and the explanation I give for that is a statement in the book of Genesis. Jacob had worked, uh, just a minor digression, Jacob had worked with God for many years. But Jacob was a riffraff. He was a dodgy figure. And when he had an encounter between Genesis chapter 32 and 35, the Bible says God brought Jacob to El Bethel. Initially, he knew God at Bethel, which is the house of God. The God of Abraham, his father. Jalen, you know what? If Papa Nikaya saw me, 
Mr. Fletcher, yeah. The Papa Ned in the question. He himself doesn't know God. So Jacob is business as usual. That he knew better the house of God. And then when he had an encounter with God, when he came to know God proper, proper, he changed better to El Bethel. Now he knew the God of the house of God. After God said, go to Bethel and renew your consecration. When he cast out all the demons and the gods and foreign gods, the Bible says he came to El Bethel. Because now he's not talking about the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac. He's talking about his own God. May God bring you to El Bethel. I said, may God move you from Bethel to El Bethel. In this program, May God move you from better to a better. May you know the God of the house of God. Because there are many people in the house of God who don't know the God of the house. Put your hands together for the last time. I want to find who is clapping and who is not clapping. Hallelujah. So now, building my case systematically, we are getting into deeper waters. We've seen what the Time magazine said. Most powerful figure in human history. we we'll put that behind us. We've seen what secular historians say. The witness to over 332 predictions concerning Jesus fulfilled in one person. We've seen seven times, I am, which leaves us Many still unconvinced. I am the bread of life. I am the door. I am the way. Which emphasizes is I am as God. And people say they are not convinced. Jesus performed 35 specific miracles. Josephus in the Testimonium Flavonium says, Jesus was a doer of startling deeds. If any be me a great and people were not convinced. Now, if Jesus... Now, let's move it further. We are talking about Jesus, the Son of God. Now, if Jesus' miracles were just healing, or we say it's easier, but He broke the laws of nature. Now, if it's just about multiplying food, no problem. Can I hear amen? Oh, no, lift up your hand and give the Lord a wave. Give the Lord a wave. I'm going to deal with, we are, we are now looking at Jesus, the Son of God, and we are looking at the supernaturalness of His ministry. And, and when we talk about the miracles of Jesus, we look at it from four categories. Uh, Jesus' nature, miracles fall into four categories. The controlling, He controlled nature when He calmed the storm. He stretched nature when He fed the 5,000. He ruled nature when he walked on the water. They said, we don't agree. He conquered nature by raising the dead. No, you are not clapping because you don't believe. Show me, show me any religious leader who did that. Oh, put your hands together. Show me any religious leader. He controlled nature. He has power over nature. He did things no man has done. He did not only control nature by calming the storm. He stretched it to the limit and multiplied food. When they were not convinced, he ruled nature by walking on the water. And when men were not convinced, when people died, he raised them back. Now, I'm coming to the critical point in the teaching. Nothing Jesus did in his earthly ministry surpasses, supersedes, or validates him as the Son of God like his resurrection. That's where we are now. 
Nothing. Nothing. If he died and was not risen, that would have been the end. But you go, he was me. Everybody died. So how about it? Nothing validates the claim as the son of God. And I'm taking you to unfamiliar territory. Like his claim to the resurrection. Romans chapter 4. Declared to be the son of God with power. By the resurrection from the dead. Declared to be the son of God with power. By the spirit of holiness. Through the resurrection from the dead. The resurrection from the dead is the greatest validation that Jesus is the Son of God. I have power to lay down my life. I have power to take it up again. And I declare, child of God, that today, whatever you are facing, the Lord can raise you up. I said, the Lord can raise you up. What He did, He will do for you. Can I hear Amen? The Lord can raise you up. In Hebrews chapter 13, they say, the Bible says, Jesus Christ. Now, that's still about the divinity of Jesus, the Son of God. It says in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 8, Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forever. No human being can say that. From Muhammad to Buddha. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, Today and forever. Jesus was there before 3 HD came. Jesus is multidimensional. Titi nyami. Ende nyami. Enochine nyami. Now, for us as human beings, we live only for today. Now, catch me carefully. Jesus, the Son of God. We are only limited to today. You can't do anything about tomorrow. We are not even sure what will happen tonight. We don't know. But Jesus has power over yesterday. And has power over today. And has power over tomorrow. That's why as the Son of God, I want you to know tonight, Jesus can fix your past. Ah... Uh... Jesus can go into your past and change your past. Oh, you are a prostitute. Oh, you are a bad person. Jesus can change your past and give you a new future. You have a bad past. You are an armed robber. God forbid you are a prostitute. You are a burglar. You are a petty thief. Your background is checkered. Everything in your past is not good. And when you get born again and meet the Son of God. Hey, 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 hey. When you meet the Son of God, Jesus can go into your past like Jacob, like Jacob, like Jacob, and change your past. Nobody can do that. Jesus can go into your path and change your path. I had, I had, I'm still working it out now. We have gotten to the place where we are dealing with Jesus, the Son of God. I had a, a, a man who gave a testimony and said, he was reading that scripture and was sharing the testimony. He said, when he was an unbeliever, I had a relationship with a girl and things were really rough. He said he broke the girl's heart. And when he got born again, he didn't know what to do. The guilt of it was too much for him. So he wanted to find a way to deal with it. And then one day he went to a program. And he met the girl standing with the man. And he went to greet the girl. And the girl told him, Oh, I'm happy you're a preacher now. But I thank God. God has given me a better man than you. So the problem the guy was trying to solve, God has solved it. God has given me a better 
better man than you. So the guy thought he was going to solve the problem. Jesus has gone ahead and given the girl a better man than who he thought he was. I declare after this program, God will sort out your past. Oh, no, 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 no. I can't hear you. I can't hear you. If there is anything in your past, anything in your past, anything in your closet, anything in your background, like Joseph, your problem, like Jacob, your problem with Esau, I declare God will sort it out. Let Janice, I believe. One more time. Yeah. Give the Lord a jump. God will sort it out. God will sort it out. The Son of God has power over your past, has power over your present, has power over your future. Whoa! Be seated. From today, when you live here, you heard the word of God, Jesus, the Son of God. Don't worry about your past anymore. God will fix it up. Lift your hands, I believe it. Declare to be the Son of God with power. According to the Spirit of Holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. We come to a crucial point. Now we are looking at using the resurrection to justify the claim as the Son of God. Everything in Christianity hangs on the resurrection. The resurrection gave the disciples a new understanding of Jesus. Who he was and what he came to do. Let's push it. As Jesus said in his first public address after the resurrection, he revealed that God had made in Acts chapter 2 verse 36, he said God has made this Jesus to be both Lord and Messiah. Jesus bodily resurrection Gave the disciples the evidence they needed. Now, let's, let, let me show you something. If Jesus was the Son of God, they said to him in Matthew, chapter 27, verse 40 and 43, If Jesus, you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. So we see what you see from. He said, and they said, he trusted in God. Let him deliver him now. If you would have him. For he said, I am the son of God. God didn't deliver him. He was on the cross. Conclusion. Jesus of Nazareth is not the son of God. God said, if he's the son of God, let his father come and deliver him. And God didn't. So to them, he's not the son of God. Conclusion. Jesus of Nazareth is not the son of God. Three days later, Seventy-two hours after. What they said was not possible. God made it possible. I, I am not used to giving prophecy. Can I give you a prophecy today? That 72 hours, God will change your destiny. Ooh! Oh my God. 72 hours, you will get that phone call. God will open you a door. The Lord will hear your voice. 72 hours. Let God and say 72 hours. Receive it now. Makadava. 72 hours. You receive a phone call that will change your destiny. God will open you a door you have never entered before. 72 hours. 72 hours. Give the Lord a shot. They say, they say God will not do it. They say God has run away from you. I declare 72 hours from today. If I be a man of God, if I be a man of God, 72 hours, let God validate you. Let God vindicate you. Shout amen. Yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Seventy-two hours. 
Lift your hands and say seven to two hours. Now where we say seven to two hours, God will validate my testimony. God will vindicate me from this moment. Seven to two hours. The Son of God shall hear my voice and show me mercy. Give the Lord a shout. Seven to two hours. You will sign the contract. God will open you the door. You will do what you have not done before. In the name of Jesus. Keep coming. Seven to two hours. We have a phone call. And that's just how we share bread. We have a phone call. You will see the glory of God. Be seated. When you live here, prepare for the 72 hours. Your enemies have challenged you. If he is the son of God, let him come down. Let God come and deliver him. God didn't. God doesn't challenge men. God does not accept the challenge of men. How can God challenge a malam? Malam. Onyami o wosro. Ambe challenge malam. Enye ye. Onyami o dimri na ye juma. God will surely come on his own terms, in his own time. They say you will not marry. They say you will not travel. They say God has forsaken you. God didn't do it to Jesus. He will not do it to you. I declare when you step out today of love revolution, your life will change. Your life will change. Your life will change. Receive the resurrection. The power of the resurrection. The same power. The same power. The same power. The raised Christ from the dead. The same power shall quicken your mortal body. Bibi Bessi. Bibi Bessi. Bibi Bessi. I've been to Love Revolution many times. But, but when you step out of here, something will happen. Something God told me right now. You will see something you have not seen before. You will hear something you have not heard before. You will go where you have not gone before. Because the same power that raised Christ from the dead, the same power will quicken your business, will quicken your career, will quicken your marriage. Receive it now. Yes. Be seated. After three days, God had vindicated Jesus. And so when Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6, a thoroughly Jewish writer, the resurrection was placed where it belonged. Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 6, there is one God and one Lord, Jesus Christ. You see, the resurrection reveals Jesus' unique identity. Now, and so when Thomas saw the risen Lord. He declared the unthinkable among Jews. My Lord and my God. Until then it was impossible to say that. But when Thomas saw him, after he died and rose, 
makadia zandili makuntaya let God show himself to you today may you see God in a way you have never seen him there is something about God you don't know and today I give you a a sure word of prophecy within the next 72 hours you will see God in a certain dimension Lift your hand and say, my Lord and my God. One more time. So you see, the resurrection is not merely important to historic Christianity and faith. It elevates Christianity above all other religions. Through the resurrection, Jesus Christ demonstrated that he does not stand in the same league. Only one akanim bo league back no, they don't all play backlist premier. On our boss super cup. Jesus demonstrated that he is not in the same league with peers like Abraham, Buddha, Muhammad, and Napoleon. No, Jesus Christ is the Son of the Living God. And so, listen. When the angel Gabriel came, he said his name shall be Emmanuel, God with us. How is God with you? So first John chapter one verse seven. But if we walk in the light, if we walk, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ is son cleanses us. Let's get some teaching before I wrap up. In Hebrews chapter seven verse twenty five. After he died and rose, his death on the cross and his resurrection, in Hebrews 7.25, he became the high priest with perfect power. When I say it, you pop up your hand. And you are groping your dear heart. I said, he became the high priest with perfect power. Manifans, manifans. He's watching, he's watching. That's my God. That's my man. That's my man. That's my man. Jesus is my man. What? You see that? That's my man. What? How about that? That's my God. Check him out. When you look at Hebrews 7.26, he is the high priest with perfect life. He who knew no sin. And then when you go to Hebrews 7.27, he is the perfect high priest with perfect sacrifice. No goats and bulls. And so when you go to Hebrews 7.28, he has a perfect appointment. He said, Mary, don't touch me. I've not gone to your father and my father. Bonsam Merade. Now, listen to this as I get ready to wrap up. An atheist who doesn't believe in God met a preacher with what he thought was a formidable foolproof argument against the divinity of Christ. Get ready. He said, you say that Jesus Christ is equal with the eternal Father. But that cannot be. For no son is ever as old as the one who bore him. The preacher was listening. It's a pretty good argument. He said, no father ever has a son that is as old as himself. The preacher cleared his throat. And stated calmly, you yourself has called God the eternal Father. Don't you realize that God can only be an eternal father if he has an eternal son? How can you be a father without a son? So if you are Muslim saying God cannot, Jesus cannot be an eternal son, ah, then the God the father is an eternal father. So it's only logical. Give the Lord a hand.
So then, eternal fatherhood demands eternal sonship. Period. I've made my case. We are waiting for them. Eternal fatherhood demands eternal sonship. Get your hair, baby. So how can they say? It's not. Today I can shout like Thomas. My Lord and my God. Lift up your right hand. Be seated. Be seated. We are not there yet. When I declare. Lift up your hand. And listen to my words. When I declare that I believe in God. I am declaring I am not an atheist. Who says God does not exist? Then you say Amen. You are affirming your faith. Lift up your hand. When I declare that I believe in God, I am saying I'm not an agnostic. Who says I don't know if God exists? You say Amen. When I say I believe in the living God, I am saying I am not an idolater who worships toads. I am not a worshipper of dead ancestors like Buddha. I am declaring I am a worshipper of the living God. I am not a polytheist who worships many gods. Concluding on that, when I say I believe in Jesus, the Son of God, I am stating I am not a pantheist who believes there are many gods. I am not a modernist who doesn't believe in the virgin birth. I am not a Mohammedan who says he's just one of the messengers of God. But I am a child of God. Sit down as we conclude, please. Jesus is God's one and only Son. Colossians chapter 2, verse 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. The preaching of the cross is to some foolishness. But to us who are saved, it is the power of God. It is the power of God unto salvation. It is said that Billy Sunday, the great American revivalist, said there are 256 names of Jesus in the Bible. Let's glorify him with some. Lift up your hand. I'm going to take you through the names of Jesus from A to Z. Lift up your hand. A is an advocate to the Lord. Now you say amen. He's an advocate to the Lord. He's an author and finisher. B is the bread of life. C is the chief cornerstone. D, lift up here, is the door of life. F is the firstborn from the dead. The first and the last. G is the God with us. H is the Holy One. Our hope and glory. I is the great I am, the image of God. J is the judge of the living and the dead. Ah, this is the big one. K is the king of kings. Oh. L is the Lord of lords. M is the man of sorrow, the mighty God and Messiah. B is the physician, the priest and the prophet, the prince of life. R is the rock, the ruler of the kings of the earth, the resurrection and the life. S is the savior, the shepherd and the son of man, the son of righteousness. D is the teacher, the true vine. U is the unspeakable gift. W is the way and the word. Maranatha, the Son of God. Give the Lord a shout. Give the Lord a shout.
by the sermon. For inquiries, please call plus 233-267-6055. Plus 233-267-6055. Or send an email to info at godswordforus.com. Info at godswordforus.com. Yeah.